Failing to keep your acoustic guitar humidified can leave you with a damaged or even unplayable guitar. I'll show you an easy do-it-yourself solution that I've been using for years so you can keep your guitars in great shape too. Welcome back to Relax and Learn Guitar. I'm Kevin and this is Maggie May. Ooh, want two today? Nope, just one. My wife Vicky's behind the camera. Hello. Let's get started on this DIY humidity solution. So when it comes to your acoustic guitar, humidity is really, really important. The amount of moisture that your guitar has or doesn't have can really affect the way it plays, the way it looks, and even if it's usable or not. So depending on what part of the country or the world you live in, it is going to be a little different. Uh, here in Ohio, we have pretty dry winters, so I really pay attention to this a little more in the winter time than in the summertime. But it's been kind of a, like, when's the last time it rained? A while. Yeah, like it's kind of dry right now. So um, this is an important thing to keep track of. If you don't keep your guitar humidified, some things you'll notice probably are going to be sharp frets. So the fret wire that's embedded into your fretboard, when your guitar dr is dry, it obviously contracts and shrinks. And that can mean that your fret wires maybe stick out and get a little sharp. That's a clear sign <laughs> that you probably need to do something. You can also just look at your fretboard if it's getting kind of a dry look and starting to get even cracks, that's not a good sign. Uh, the good news is with some prevention, you can really keep a lot of this from happening. If you don't, let's say like uh, I've been at like a yard sale and looking at guitars and I've picked some up that were just in horrible, horrible shape. If you like leave your guitar out in the sun or in the trunk of your guitar, of your car, <laughs> the trunk of your guitar, <laughs> uh, the trunk of your car, um, and it's not getting humidity, what you can start noticing is you'll even notice like the body of your guitar being affected. It might like sink. You can see some instances where like the bridge will actually pull away or come off of the actual guitar or it might, the body might get cracked and all those things are fixable, but why fix them when you can just keep them from happening? Them. <laughs> yes. Keep them happening in the first place. I know when it's time to start paying more attention to the humidity of my guitar because my uh, strings and frets will buzz, especially up here, like in the nine to 10, 12 fret range. And that's just, every guitar is different, but like if I'm doing that and I hear a buzz, I know, ooh, time to uh, do something about this. And lastly, it can affect like the action of your guitar and how easy it is to play. If your guitar is really dry and starting to shrink, your neck can even get a little bowed. Your strings will be higher off the fretboard, making it even more difficult to play, which is obviously not a good thing. So I've got a DIY solution for you and don't start laughing a little bit when I start showing you the materials that you'll need for this solution. And you can, you can buy things out there that are specifically made for humidifying your guitar. I have just found this to work for many, many years. Uh, I use it on my Martin, all my guitars, my acoustic guitars anyway. So supplies that you'll need. Are you ready? Kitchen sponge. Is that where all my sponges went? Yeah, hey, I've been man. I've been using those up. If you haven't <laughs> haven't noticed, yeah, you'll need a you'll need a kitchen sponge. You'll need a baggie. I like the snack size baggies just because they're a little more compact. We're getting all technical here with <laughs> snack size baggies. A piece of shoestring, all right. A hole punch, and a pair of scissors, <laughs> all right. So use your scissors to cut your sponge in half. Uh, I've just from experimenting and seeing how things work, I've really found like half of this to be enough and just kind of just right for my guitars. It's also uh, when you kind of see how we're going to use these, it's a little less cumbersome uh, to use a half a sponge than a whole sponge. So cut your sponge in half Then you're going to take your baggie and you're going to take your hole punch and just, I just kind of fold the baggie over. I didn't think about doing like a top-down video here. It's like a crafting video. We're talking about guitars and baggies today, people. So just use your hole punch to punch some holes. Um, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so holes in the actual baggie. Once you've done that, you're going to um, take that baggie, pop in your sponge, 
wet? We're going to talk about that in a, oh. in a little bit. Pop your sponge in there and you kind of kind of get the solution going. Then I just poke a little hole here in the corner and I tie a string, shoestring, the final product. I've got like a dozen holes in this baggie, half the sponge, and I just tied the shoestring through a punched hole here in the corner. And this is our super elaborate <laughs> guitar humidifier, okay? Now, the reason I uh, have the string and how I kind of use this, uh, Vicki asked about, you know, does it need to be wet? So you want to dampen your sponge. You want to, you know, get it wet and wring it out. You don't want it dripping. You don't want to drip water, you know, into your guitar and, and cause even more damage that way. It just needs to be damp. So once you've kind of dampened, I use this in a couple of different ways. I will tie the string around the top of my uh, guitar stand and then just let it hang into the sound hole of the guitar. Uh, I also sometimes just pop it right into the sound hole of the guitar and I just use the string to get it out easily. Um, <laughs> the other day I was playing my guitar and I'm like, what? It doesn't sound like totally right. And then I realized and shook it and <laughs> one of my DIY humidifiers was still in my guitar. So like, you know, you need to take it out of your guitar as well. So that's what I used to actually keep my guitar humidified, like using it inside the guitar. The other thing that I do too, especially in the winter time, is I take a little Gladware container, another super high tech going on here. I poke some holes in the lid of the Gladware container. I cut my sponge into sort of a circle and I'll dampen that, pop it here, close it up, and I'll sit that inside my actual guitar case, like up by the headstock. And if it's really dry out, I'll like put one of these in the guitar case and I'll also use uh, the baggy one inside the guitar. And that seems to do the trick. So while you're doing this, you're probably wondering like, what am I even measuring or trying to shoot for? So you, you will need to buy a, I always mess up this name, hygrometer. I think that's the right way to say it, hygrometer. It measures humidity. This one's a very simple one to see. I like the big, big, uh, numbers on it. You can see the humidity and like the temperature. The humidity is much more important than the temperature. Um, so like right now, this one's at 60%, which is a good uh, number, but you want to have something that you're able to keep in the same room or close to your guitar to measure the humidity. And you want to shoot for like between 40 and 60% is a good range. It can go a little lower than that. Like I'll see mine go down to like 35 percent and that's okay too but you want to kind of stay in that 40 to 60 range uh, you don't want to waterlog it but you also don't want it to dry out so um, just kind of I just kind of keep an eye when I know what the weather's getting like and what the humidity level is and I'll uh, pop the uh, baggie in there or the one in this case and be good to go so I'll leave a link in the description for this uh, nifty little hygrometer. <laughs> I'm always paranoid about saying that the wrong way. I'll leave a link in the description for you in case you're interested. Um, this one's pretty inexpensive. Again, this is a way to spend like a couple of bucks on some baggies and kitchen sponges and just pull an old shoestring out of a shoe. And you can spend very little money to take care of your uh, even very expensive guitars. So I'll, uh, I'll dampen that sponge, put it back in the baggie or the, the Gladware. I do like to leave my guitars out um, where I can see them. It makes me want to play them more. <laughs> and I just like looking at them. Uh, but if you're really concerned, you can keep your guitar in a case and uh, use the, you know, the little container solution or double up and do that and the baggy solution. I like leaving mine on the stand and then I just use that shoestring to kind of keep track of it. What I'll do is I'll dampen that sponge and put it in there and I'll check it every like two or three days uh, to see again what the humidity level is and whether I need to just kind of, you know, dampen the sponge again and start over. Uh, depending on the time of the year, I can go months without ever using anything in my guitars, but then sometimes in the parts of the year, like I said, depending on where you live and what your weather's like, you might need to keep a closer eye on things. But every couple of two or three days at the time of year that I need to use it, works for me. So make sure that you are measuring the humidity around your guitar. Then now you've got some easy kind of the baggy solution. You can even use like the snack size ones if you want a smaller profile there or the super uh, high tech <laughs> container version. But you've got those and uh, keep those in place. Now you've got your guitar protected and all in good shape. Time to learn some more songs. So check out this playlist next with some of my most popular song lessons. 
Remember that Vicki and Maggie and I very much appreciate your views and your support here on YouTube. And until next time, remember that you're never too old to learn. See you soon.